Welcome to Odoo Live. Uh, I am, like I said, my name is Noel Yuri Bermudez. Hopefully you can all hear me now. Uh, community manager here at Odoo Live in San Francisco. I will be your host for today's webinar. Today, as I mentioned, we will be joined by Cedric Vandermeesh, senior functional consultant and Odoo expert here to discuss uh, barcode interfacing using Odoo. Thank you for joining us, Cedric. Well, thank you very much for having me, Noel. Um, today's presentation is about uh, is going to take about 40 minutes, uh, which will leave us about 20 minutes uh, for a Q&A session uh, at the end. Great. And so, yeah, throughout the presentation, we will be answering your questions in the YouTube chat. Any questions that are left, Cedric will help me get to them at the end of the session uh, during our Q&A. So if you'd like to view this webinar again, simply access the link to the video and you can watch it anytime once the live event has finished. Um, so yeah, take it away, uh, Cedric. All right, well, uh, so we're going to get started. Uh, I'm hoping that all of you guys can see my screen at the moment. Um, I guess that uh, our uh, people will take care of that. Look at that, beautiful. Uh, so I am now in a uh, brand new 11, uh, version 11 uh, Odoo database uh, to show you all about the uh, barcode interface. Uh, here's the plan for today. What we're going to do is uh, do actually basic flows and show you how you can match your inventory uh, by using a simple barcode scanner way faster and way efficiently than if you are actually uh, doing it manually. And uh, now the barcode interface does require some pre-configuration. Uh, so what we're going to do today is that, uh, that I'm first going to, going to show you uh, how to do the basic install and configuration of the barcode app. Right. Um, then I will also redirect you to some tips and tricks regarding our hardware because our website features a very um, easy page that shows you what we recommend as hardware that you can use during the barcodes. And um, basically then what we're going to do is some basic flows. Uh, we are going to purchase a normal product, a very expensive car, uh, and put a serial number on that car once it enters our stock. We will as well um, uh, do a product with what we call a make to order. So it means that we are going to uh, have a order received by a client. So we're going to sell the car and then we're going to automatically purchase the car to our vendor, put it into our inventory and then deliver it to our client. Um, one of the last steps that, that I'm going to do is show you uh, the logic of how you can actually do an inventory adjustment. So how you can count your inventory uh, using the um, using the uh, barcode scanner, basically. So what do I have as um, software and hardware right now? Well, I have the Odoo uh, application here. And if we go uh, have a quick look at the apps here, it's a simple SaaS database. So if you want to create your SaaS database, you simply go to www.odoo.com slash start and you can select your first app you want to uh, you want uh, to go with, right? So basically what you can do here is uh, start by installing the, the different apps that you want to uh, to have in your um that you want uh, to have in your uh, in your database. What I did is that I installed the following app. Uh, you can actually use the filter here to go into uh, the filter and see whatever is installed. So what I installed are the following apps. So you don't need a lot to be able to start doing inventory management. Actually, you can even start with only inventory, but because I wanted to show you a flow where, where I, I'm actually going to sell a car to my clients, I also installed the sales uh, management app. Uh, the invoicing app is a, a dependency on the sales and I also installed the purchased and warehouse barcode app to be able to scan my barcodes. Uh, the only things that, that, that I have more is of course my laptop here that I'm showing my screen to. I have one barcode scanner that you can see right here and I have actually also one printer because I will need to print some barcodes at some point. So that's why I have a printer with other frame but it is ready to go to uh, print some barcodes. Usually what will happen in most um, uh, companies is that the printer I'm currently having here will be in your inventory. So it is, way, it is possible to have your sales offices, let's say in San Francisco, and then have your inventory like back in Oakland and having your printer set up to print all of your picking orders from San Francisco to your inventory offices in Oakland. But that's enough talk, let's get started. Um, the first thing that, that we're going to do in to do is create two products, one that we want to sell and one that we want uh, to, uh, to purchase into our inventory, right? 
So if I go into my sales application here, I can basically go into my catalog here and into my products, right? Like you see, I pre-created two products. I pre-created a mobile phone and a Tesla car. I'm gonna start with the Tesla car. If I click on the Tesla car here, um, there are a couple of things that you need, need to do. First of all, fill in the name obviously, because you need to, to know what you're going to sell. Um, I uh, selected into my Tesla car that I could, uh, that, that my car could be sold and could be purchased. Why? Because at some point I'm going to sell the car and I'm also going to purchase it um, to a vendor, right? It is a stockable product, of course, because I want it to be uh, in my stock. Uh, and then it is a very important um, uh, part. I actually added a barcode to my product. Right. The barcode that I used here is a very simple um, standard EAN 13 um, barcode. So for this example, I simply use a barcode that I already had on hand. I scanned it into my product um, just to be able to have it here. You can either scan it directly with a barcode scanner or you can fill it in manually. You, you can also import it, of course, if you wish. Um, if you want some more details about how to, to scan or how to import, we can, of course, address that during the uh, Q&A session. Make sure to, um, uh, to add that into uh, the questions. All right. Um, in the purchase um, widget here, the only important thing that I added in terms of configuration is a vendor. Why? Because, well, at the moment that, that I want to purchase my, uh, my car, I want my vendor already predefined on that so, so that I can automatically create a purchase order. All right, so please add a vendor into, into your car. Uh, in the inventory, at the moment, I only selected a buy route because uh, the first step I'm going to, to do is simply purchase the car. Later on, we will also activate the make to order route here to do a second flow where you automatically can, can create a purchase order from a sale order. Right. Uh, in terms of tracking, uh, I will in a first uh, but not track my uh, car by unique serial number, I will do no track for the first case. Uh, I will do one with uh, the tracking of the serial number right after. All right. Uh, invoicing is a very important tag as well, but uh, at the moment we are uh, talking about inventory, so I'm going to skip that one for now. Some notes that, that here that you can also add into your, uh, into your different... Um, uh, they, they can also add uh, to have more description on your picking types or to have more description on your uh, transfer or customers. All right. Okay, so um, so we have uh, created our product, we have installed um, our uh, correct apps. Uh, quick detail, of course, is that um, in terms of configuration, if you go into the inventory app here, please make sure to do the following. So you go into the inventory app and then into configuration. From configuration, you go into settings. And into the settings, make sure to tick the fact that you want to uh, use the barcode uh, scanner. Right. Please make sure as well uh, to select the fact uh, that you want to use lots and serial numbers if that is the case. Very important. And for the moment, that is all that you need to do. All right. So um, last um, last uh, link I wanted to share with you as well um, was the fact that if you uh, go have a quick Google search or if I can put a link here somewhere because I don't know what happened with my screen. Uh, oh. Can I? oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. All right, so basically, uh, if you follow uh, the, the following ring, uh, link, so simply page inventory uh, dash hardware, you will find all the necessary information that you need uh, in able to set up and to see uh, the, um, uh, yeah, the different hardware that, that, that you can use to manage your uh, inventory. So I have one here uh, with an, an USB uh, scanner, but you, you can also have uh, mobile devices. So. Uh, please have a look. Uh, it's always interesting to, to see whatever uh, product we, of course, recommend. All right. <laughs> okay. So um, so now that we have come uh, to all of that, the first thing that, that I, I want to do is to purchase a car and simply receive it within my, uh, within my uh, inventory. If I go have a look at what my inventory looks like today, 
uh, I only have the receipt and the delivery orders, right? In my master data here, I can go into the products and I see that on hand I have uh, three units of my uh, car and four units of my mobile phone. Now, I know that I will need uh, more of the Tesla car, right? So I'm gonna purchase one. What I do then is that I simply go into the purchase app usually because the purchase department is a different department than the uh, warehouse department, uh, I'm going to create a request for quotation. We we'll click on request for quotation. I'm going to select my vendor, Tesla here, and simply add my product into my, my purchase order. Uh, this will be my uh, Tesla car, right? Um, I save my request for quotation. And I can actually confirm my order. At the moment that, that, that I confirm my order, I will actually say that my vendor is going to uh, send me the car. Now, one thing that, that you can do, of course, is also send the RFQ by email. So if you click on send the RFQ by email, you will, able to, uh, you, you will be able to see um, the email that you can send to your contacts. You know a certain Elon at Tesla. So you're going to simply send him an email asking for the latest Tesla, right? We can send it, and now in the chatter here, you you will see that um, that the uh, that your contact has received your order. Now let's just skip ahead and say that the Tesla is going to arrive today. At that point, actually, you you should have already confirmed your order. Why? Because you have a scheduled date for uh, for tomorrow. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that scheduled date and put it for today. That way, my inventory expects to receive a Tesla car today. If I confirm my order, I will have one shipment ready and vendor bills that I can create as well. The, the, the shipments, however, is not my responsibility anymore because I'm only the purchase uh, department. I will leave the receipt of the car up to my inventory. What happens then? Um, in the inventory app, so we are now back at Oakland, uh, I have one um, one uh, element that I need to, to receive, right? So I can click on that small button and it will actually show me all the elements that I have to, to receive today. This is very handful because that way you know that, that you can only print the received orders for the ones who are planned today. So you, you then select the received orders that you want to print out, you click on the print button and click on the picking operation. At that stage, you will have a PDF file downloaded, and the idea is that then your uh, your department can print that out, waiting for uh, your Elon guy to uh, come over with your uh, brand new car. I will now print that into my uh, printer that I have right next here. All right, I'm having some trouble to navigate here. Okay, here we go. And basically, right now, I have actually a um, I have actually a um, entire new uh, picking operation uh, who has been uh, printed out into my warehouse. Now, if you uh, see the, this um, this paper, it's uh, pretty easy to, to use. The first thing that, that we are going to do is basically scan this uh, barcode to be able to open the uh, perfect <laughs> to be able uh, to open um, the operation right we see from which order this oh, we see from which order this actually originally came we see the state we see the commitment date so we know that we have to, to receive it for today normally for 6 p.m but yeah uh, and we have the, 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 the scheduled date here then you have a choice you will be able to, to, to scan your Tesla car with this barcode or, of course, if you have a barcode already on your car, you can actually scan that barcode as well. It will recognize it. That is what I am going to do. So right now, what we are going to, to, to do, if we switch back to my uh, screen. Yep. All right. If we um, switch back to my screen, we are, we are going to go into um, the, uh, the barcode application. All right. Um, we, uh, from, uh, from this uh, barcode application, we can do uh, a couple of things. I just saw actually that uh, Mohanat, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that I'm uh, pronouncing that right, um, asked uh, where we can actually print barcodes from Odoo. And uh, here is your answer, actually. So you, you can cre uh, print the barcode commands from here. So if you click on there, you will have commands. The commands is this, um, is this sheet. I'm actually going to download it and show it directly to you. Uh, it's actually uh, stuff that you would do manually normally, but that, that now you can actually scan, 
right? So you have a uh, save option, you have a discard option and an edit option. Now, I think that the real question from Mohanat was actually where you can print uh, labels for your products. Um, if that is, is the case, what you need to do is actually simply go into any product. So I'm just gonna get back to the barcode in a minute. So you can go into any products for your car right here and you can either do it in list view or go directly into the car and click on the print to click uh, to have your print labels and in that moment you will have once again a new PDF that shows your name, your price and the barcode to, to scan once the people check out. Right now, in our case, we are more doing inventory. So when we do inventory, usually you will purchase your products uh, from an external source, and they will already have barcodes on them. So uh, often, what a lot of my clients do is that um, they will just reuse the same barcodes as their vendor. That way, no picky. They can simply order the, their products. The products enter into their warehouse. No need to go look for the right product. You can simply scan the product which is entering into your warehouse. It's way faster. But you have the option and. Depending on your case, of course, you can choose uh, whatever fits your needs the best. But let's get back to uh, where, where we were and into the exciting part, which is uh, the real barcode application. If we enter the barcode application here, we actually only have to, to start from here, right? Remember, what we want to do now is receive our car. There is a truck pulling out in Oakland, and we have the car who is uh, currently being uh, pulled into uh, our inventory. But someone needs to say to the system that we have actually received it, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the uh, paper that I just, I'm going to do it like this, yep. So the, the paper that I just printed out in my warehouse, and I'm going to start scanning it. So I'm putting it down, I'm taking my barcode scanner, and I have a little trick I have to do on my laptop. It's simply because, like you may have heard with my French accent, I originally come from Europe, and I brought my laptop over from Europe. So actually I have a, a Belgian keyboard. Now my barcode scanner is by default um, uh, configured as, a American, as an American um, barcode keyboard um, uh, scanner. So that way, uh, if I scan it right now, it, it will just give me a mambo jumbo of um, uh, of numbers, which is not uh, what you, what you want. You want uh, your keyboard to be configured exactly the the same as your barcode scanner. So be also careful. Don't uh, hit, for instance, a caps lock button or hit uh, something that, that that could alter the numbers that this USB scanner is going to uh, generate for you. A good trick if you want to check, by the way, is to open a simple notepad, scan a barcode and see what happens. If you want a quick example on that, on how to troubleshoot your problem, you can simply enter a notepad, right? And if I leave my configuration like it is right now, so if I leave it like it is exactly right now, it will be very strange. If I scan my barcode now, look at that, I'm having something that is actually not correct. You can see it. However, if I switch the configuration of my laptop into um, an American keyboard, here we go, and that I rescan that exact same uh, barcode, you will see that you will have something way more, uh, way more uh, readable. All right. So we will keep that configuration, and we will now. I uh, don't want to save that. Uh, we will now uh, get back to our uh, barcode scanning app and scan our operation. So look at that. I simply scan my operation. It opens it up into a do already in the edit mode, so I can immediately start editing it. Right. What I want to do is scan uh, my products because I want to, to say, okay, my Tesla car is actually here. So I have a barcode ready here that I can scan up. Show people. Why don't you show people on the camera? So lift, For lift sure. Up the, uh... So basically, so I have. So obviously, I could not have a Tesla car in here, even though I would really want to. So what I have is instead I have a snack, a, a red. Can I see a red snack with a barcode in it? Uh, just to d d demonstrate, that is actually the barcode which is on my product. So right now I am not scanning the document anymore. I'm scanning the actual product here. So I scan my product and look at what happens with the screen. You will see that that immediately my test my Tesla car went from reserved one done one. So it means that I actually have my Tesla car into my inventory right now. See how fast then that went? No need to go look. In, in the entire box where your product is, you simply scan it, Odoo finds it. Now what I then want to do is actually either save or immediately validate my picking. So what any normal user would have done is clicked on the save here or clicked on the validate button. But no, we have a barcode scanner, so we can actually use the commands I printed out earlier, right, and actually scan the one that, that says validate. 
I scan the one that says validate and look at my screen. My picking is completely validated and done. Remember that, that we have um, that we had uh, four uh, quantities of my Tesla core in stock? Well, right now, if I go back into my Tesla product and that I check how much quantity I actually have, we still have four. <laughs> uh, did I have four or three? I might have three before. I right. Let's just see. So we have, uh, we have, okay, so we have three on hands here and we have one, okay, so that, that, that was my honest mistake, sorry. I had one that was tracked by serial number. Those were, those were my previous tests. So basically, uh, we have four in total, but my uh, third one did add here without a serial number. Maybe the best thing is that we will, uh, for the next one, uh, recreate a product who has zero. That way you will see the difference way easier with the serial number. All right. So that is the first case on how you can receive a product. It seems like not much here. Why? Because I have one operation and, uh, and only one product. But imagine if you would have ordered 50 products, right? If you have 50 products into an operation, you can actually scan uh, every product in individually and not worry about uh, have to count on one hand and then check in your paper what you have in the other. So right now, the main advantage here is that you're able to... Um, uh, to find your products way easier than, than you did before, all right? So, uh, that was our first case about how to receive the product into your uh, inventory. What we're now go going to do is track a product by serial number, because the Tesla core is very expensive. So I want to be able to track um, the, the serial number. So, what happens here is that we will go back into our, our inventory and configure a product for that. If we go into the master data, Excuse me. We will get back into the products here and we will now open my mobile phone. On hand, I have a quantity of four right now. So I would like to start over with you guys and actually uh, have a quantity of zero. So I'm going to duplicate my product, right? So I'm simply going to cut this uh, barcode from this product so that I can reuse it. I'm going to save this. I'm going to click on action, duplicate and have a uh, mobile phone deluxe. Right, and actually re um, re puts my barcode here. Right, that way I have the barcode here, and uh, I have everything I need for this uh, product. No, once again, go always check your, your configuration for all other widgets because you, you might have missed something. In sales, nothing to do at the moment. In purchase, ah, I haven't added a vendor, so I have to add a vendor. So I click, I'll add my vendor, and we'll say that my vendor is T-Mobile. Right. I can save and close. In terms of inventory, I will only buy it for the moment, so I don't make a different route. I will only buy it. However, in terms of tracking, I will be tracking it by unique serial number. So I want one unique serial number for every uh, product. You could do it with a lot number as well. So the, uh, the main difference between a serial number and a lot number is that a, um, a serial number is typically to identify one particular product. However, it's not always the case. Sometimes you want to track by lot. Imagine that you have um, a lot of small items. You prefer to track all of those items in one lot. So then you have one number that identifies a multiple of products. All right. So in that case, I, I would have selected by lot. But for the moment, because it's, it's a mobile phone, I want to, um, to create it by unique serial number. Invoicing, nothing to do. And notice not, not, nothing to do at the moment as well. So right now we are going to receive it. So same thing as before, we go into to the purchase app and we want to purchase uh, a product, right? So we go into the vendor here. We will uh, go into T-Mobile and into T-Mobile we will add the product uh, mobile phone deluxe. I could have, um, I could have uh, added two here as well, by the way, a three, four, a hundred, if you wanted to order a hundred uh, different serial numbers. I'm not doing it right now. Why? Because I only prepared one serial number to scan it in. Um, if at some point I can find some other serial numbers here, we could, have, uh, we could show you uh, during the Q&A how to handle multiple incomings. All right. But it's, it's the, the same idea, basically. So we save. We confirm the order, and once again, we do the exact same thing. We go back into our uh, inventory, and uh, we have one to receive here from T-Mobile. Once again, we print the picking operation. All righty. Now, Oakland knows that he needs to receive uh, that mobile phone deluxe. 
and we now get back to Oakland. So barcode operator is waiting to print to uh, scan the receipt, and we see a, um, a T-Mobile uh, truck coming in, so we have to receive it. Right now, I have the exact same uh, picking receipt that, that you saw right before, so I won't show you it again, but it's, it's the exact same logic. First, you scan the top, um, the top, um, yeah, there you go. So first you scan so the top uh, uh, barcode here. So I don't know if you can see my little, oh, here we go, right. Back in the back end here, it's opened up my, um, my, um, uh, my picking operation. And now I will actually scan my mobile phone. This is what I represent as my mobile phone, right? So my mobile phone comes in and once again, I have the barcode here. I scan it here. Here we go. Now, look at that. Something different happened than last time. Now, the system is actually saying, hey, you need to provide us with a lot or a serial number for that product. So nothing easier in that case. We will just scan the lot or serial number. Once again, I have a different kind of product here with a different barcode. So I'm going to scan that one in once again. And look, now we have the lot number and the quantity is already reserved. That, by the way, I think is a feature from 11.2 to be checked. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that right before in 11.0, so when you were um, in the uh, master, uh, if you were in the uh, stable branch, uh, you had to scan your product twice. Just FYI, uh, if you're testing this out in 11.0 uh, and it doesn't work exactly like I'm showing it right now, maybe try to scan the preview step, so the product, two times before you, um, before, uh, you try to get to the lot number. All right. If you are one of the lucky guys who are one of our clients and that you are in the SaaS version, please know that it's uh, 11.2. Uh, we fixed that, that small mistake and um, you only need to scan your product once. Right, But right now, what do we do? We have our lot number, we have our quantity reserved, we have our quantity done. So basically, once again, you want to validate your lot. So you want to tick the green button. If you want to do that, once again, take your commands page. Right, I will show it once again into the document reader here. Take your command page and look for the one who says validate, which is uh, exactly here, right? It says validate. Um, right here. What I would recommend as well is that that page, you can, it's a PDF, so you, you can basically do whatever you want with it. You can make it bigger, smaller, uh, you can plastify it and you can even um, uh, plastify it and go uh, and go hang it around in your, in your inventory. That way people don't lose it, right? They would scan something on the wall instead of scanning some loose paper. So you can do whatever you want with it basically. Uh, we click on validate. Here we go, so the lot is validated. The entire operation here is validated as well. If I now rescan validate, I will set my operation here as done. Here we go. The entire operation is set um, as done, which means that if we now go have a look at our inventory, right? If we go have a look here, inventory, we go into our master data, or even into our reporting, we can uh, see what our inventory look like right now at the current inventory leave the inventory, we can now see that we have in a mobile phone, we have one quantity on hand, we have it in stock, and we can see the lot and the serial number I scanned in here. It's way easier, it avoids mistake, and it is simply way better. All right, so that was our second case about how to, um, about how to uh, receive uh, a, um, an order. Now, uh, the last, um, the last, oh, how are we in, on, on time? Half an hour? Perfect. Yes. Um, so, um, the last one that I wanted to show you is basically the, the same thing, but with, uh, but with an MTO. So, it's now that we're going to, uh, as well, going to deliver uh, the product to our client. So, what do we do then? We simply go once again into the inventory, and we will re uh, reuse our um, uh, Tesla car. So if we take our Tesla car here, what we want now is that if I sell it to my clients, I want to purchase it, receipt it into my stock, and then once that my client leaves with it, uh, I want to put it out of my stock. So how do I do that? It's pretty easy. You simply go into the inventory here and you click um, on edit, right? 
then uh, you can uh, select the route make to order. That way, uh, when you purchase a, uh, when you sell a Tesla car, you will immediately purchase it to your vendor. Right. Of course, there are other ways of handling that as well. No company has the exact same inventory management, so you could also work with minimum stock rules or work with um, with routes. But I don't have time in 40 minutes, however, to get into all of those details. We have to focus on the barcode app. So we save our car, and now we will go into into the sales site. Into the sales site, we have a client coming into our store. Hi, I would like to purchase a Tesla. All right, no problem. We create a quotation, and we select the client. Let's say that, that, that I'm the lucky guy. Well, two. That way I can show you how two uh, items work uh, with a do. All right, so we're going to sell two. We save. And then we confirm our sale. Now, we have a delivery that is already pre-created here. That is normal. It's to say to your warehouse, hey, we are actually need two new Teslas to get delivered to our clients. Uh, but if you open up that, that, that delivery, you will see that it's currently waiting for another operation. So that way your inventory back in Oakland knows that he has to wait for a purchase order that comes in. All right. If we now get back to our purchase order, what happens is that we will see that from our source documents here, we have a PO who is created automatically. So that also um, makes the life of your purchase department way easier because you don't have to call with the sales reps all the time, right? So we open up um, a PO and then from there, uh, you, you will be able to, to see that the vendor has been pre-selected, the price and everything. We have two quantity like requested and we can always find the source document back. So if there is a mistake, you, you know how to blame. That's a wink to all the managers out there. Uh, then the rest of our flow is basically the same as we just did uh, before. We confirm the order and once we confirm the order, the shipment has come in. So once again, our inventory can now do everything. Look at that. We have one two received, but we know we also have one waiting here. So it's super easy to follow up on whatever you need to do in terms, uh, in terms of uh, inventory management. So you will do the one that, that you need to receive. You will print that out, picking operation. Once again, same as before. And then you print out um, the, uh, the operation. Here we go. I'm going to close up a couple of tabs here. Okay, so the uh, printer has done, done his work and our, um, uh, our inventory is once again going to do the exact same thing. Don't, don't forget, scan that one first, scan your uh, product barcode right after. We scan the receipt to make our uh, products come in. We scan the, oh, we scan our barcode right here to get our product. And we can scan it even a second time because look at my screen right now. I scan it only once. So I see that, that I have a reserved quantities of two, but a done quantity of one. I wanted two. So I have to scan my product two times uh, for the simple reason that I have two cars waiting into my parking lot. Scan it a second time and it's, uh, when it turns to green in your inventory, it means go, right? It turns as green and once again, we're going to, to scan the validate button right here to be able to enter it into our stock. Now, once again, look at that. This is the simple barcode app. So th those are people receiving, right? But now because we have validated into our stock, what happens with our inventory? We have one delivery order who is to do. So that's perfect. It is even easier because people can actually, you can actually even divide your inventory into two different parts that actually work with each other uh, with a very simple configuration. We click on the one to do today. Oh, and we have to, to deliver SO003 today because the, the schedule date was for today and that I am a client, I'm actually waiting to bring home my two beautiful Teslas. So I select my picking operation. It downloads as a PDF file. The PDF file here is once again generated and I print it out. And then while my customer is actually driving away, I can say, hold on, I will get your the delivery order ready, All right? We print that one out. And then while printing that one out, once again, uh, I have to, to, to do the exact same thing. 
I go into my barcode app. Um, just a quick reminder, the barcode app could, could also work on a tablet. So just imagine someone who is selling Tesla could be in a beautiful suit, having a nice tablet and a barcode scanner and simply scanning the operations that he needs while that your customer is driving out in his brand new Tesla. So once again, open your operation. All right, this time note, note on my uh, screen that we have a uh, warehouse out um, uh, sequence. So it means that we are actually um, putting the Tesla out of the, the stock. And while that your, um, while that, that your client, client drives away, you scan your, your two Teslas one time, two times, right? And then uh, as he drives into the sunshine, you can simply select on validate your sale is completely done and your inventory is completely um, up to date. All right, so there was the uh, second case. I see that we are already have uh, four, five, six questions here. So I'm going to um, wrap it up pretty uh, pretty soon. I have one minute left because I wanted to, to show you one last feature uh, of the barcode app. And the barcode app can actually also do your inventory adjustments, right? Inventory adjustment is simply when you actually want uh, to count um, how much um, quantity of a product that you have into your inventory adjustment, uh, into your inventory right now. Remember our mobile phone? So we had a, uh, a mobile phone deluxe and we had only one quantity available. Now at some point I can say, I can check my stock and sometimes mistake happens. It's nothing that, that you can do about it um, than to try to fix them, right? Uh, mistakes happen in inventory and it's not always completely up to date. Imagine that at some point you retrieve your, in your inventory valuation or your inventory uh, and you say, hey, I'm seeing that my mobile phone deluxe here, I have one quantity in WH stock, but that is strange. I see actually an entire box of them. Okay, so somebody made a mistake, so we have to correct the inventory. Now, are we going to count every individual mobile phone deluxe? No, we're going to use the barcode app of Odoo to do that um, quickly and efficiently. So, how can we do that? Once again, we go into our barcode app, and instead of clicking on, on the operations, we'll click on inventory here. That will create for us an inventory adjustment at a specific date, right? And then you simply take all of your products. So once again, and you start scanning how much product you actually have. So here I see I have one. And uh, I will just scan however real quantities I have. Normally my theoretical quantity should have shown me one because I had one into my stock. So there I have a little configuration issue or bug that I would need to investigate. But just so, so you know, um, if everything goes well, that's a bit the problems when you do something live, is that normally the theoretical quantity here should have been one. I'm not 100% sure what I did wrong here, but even though we can check that um, later on. All right. Um, oh, actually, I think I know what I did wrong is because I have, once again, those are with serial numbers. So maybe that it is actually smarter to use my, uh, my car. So let's start over. If we go into the barcodes, we can actually now do it with the Tesla car. Check how, my, how much ten Tesla car I have in my inventory. I click on inventory, same thing. And I'm going to scan my Tesla car. Okay, look at that. Now we have a theoretical quantity of that Tesla car. Oh, um, of that Tesla car uh, into... Uh, oh, my head is moving. All right, so I have a theoretical quantity of my Tesla car uh, of three, but actually I see that, that in my Tesla car I have uh, five. So then I scan four more, four more times, three, four, five. I see a real quantity instead of theoretical quantity. And then once again, I can do it like we always do. Uh, I simply click uh, on the validate barcode here, All right? And then my inventory has been adjusted. If now we go back into our uh, inventory and that we uh, go into the uh, reporting and the inventory, we will see that I now have, in terms of my Tesla car, I have uh, my inventory adapted to six on hand. Right. Once again, five that I scanned here, one previous one that I had uh, for my test that you that I would ask you nicely to disregard. I'm sorry, I should have had a cleaner uh, database. 
So, um, those were the, the flows I wanted to show with you today. I'm only two minutes late, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, I think that we can now um, get back to uh, the questions. However, I always like to uh, finish up on, on, on some advice. And so, I would say the barcode app right now um, uh, is, is already pretty well done, in my opinion, but we have experienced uh, some feedback from our clients in regards of the uh, mobile interface. Uh, so just, uh, I would recommend you uh, to have a quick look at uh, Laura Pirot's uh, Twitter account, because actually uh, she's responsible for uh, creating for our newest version, a newer mobile version, uh, a newer mobile version of the barcode app. Uh, if you go to her Twitter account, you will have a couple of R&D sneak peeks uh, that, that, that show uh, you what the new barcode app could actually look like into our newest um, version. If you're curious, make sure to go have a look. Uh, and yeah, uh, I will now uh, be able then to answer your question, I think. Right? Great, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. So we've got a few. All right. Uh, first off, uh, looks like Muhammad uh, wanted to ask how you can attach a product to one location. Okay, so basically uh, at this stage indeed, because I had 40 minutes, I had to keep the, f the flow pretty um, uh, pretty uh, basic, let's say. But uh, you, you can also use a particular route. So if you use a, um, if you use a route, you, you can actually push or... Um, make so that the uh, picking operation that I showed you in the beginning, you know, like the incoming shipments, um, pushes the product from the vendor location into a sub-location. And that way, when the picking operation arrives, you can actually tie that to a, a particular um, uh, to a particular vendor. So I'm going to try to show you that uh, quickly, but yeah, I have to have 40, 50 minutes left, so I would like to cover all the questions. So if it requires too much configuration, I might redirect you to our supports or redirect you to our uh, online documentation. But basically, if you want uh, multiple uh, locations, you, you should select the multiple locations right here. All right. I even think that you can maybe do it without the routes. So let's check. Um, let's say that now we have uh, different locations. So we go into configuration, locations. And uh, we have only one, but we want to create a new sub-location that is called, uh, let's say, shelf one. Oh. Shelf one. Then we can select the parent location, uh, WH stock here, right? Uh, always know that it's an internal location. That's very important, right? And in that case, if I remember correctly, on a, a particular product, you could actually, let's do it with our Tesla car. If you go into the categories, okay, you, oh no, you have a force removal, so I think that, that you do need the route then. So if we go into settings here, uh, I can look for put away, but that's not the case. So let's uh, go for the routes. Okay. Perfect. So we have uh, set put away strategies on locations here. All right. So right now, normally, if I go back into the inventory, to the configuration of the location into shelf one, I can actually put, uh, or maybe I will uh, do it into uh, the stock. I can actually uh, set a put away strategy right here. So I can say that, that I want it to be in shelf one. And for which product category? Okay, for all at the moment, right? Because that way, uh, I know that uh, all of my product d d d will go into that, um, will go into that uh, shelf. And then, then I select my uh, shelf one. Here we go. And I will select shelf one here. Save. This is the simple solution because that way, when I go into purchase, I go into my uh, request for quotations. Uh, I take any one, I would prefer the one without a serial number, so I'm going to take uh, the one I use with my uh, Tesla. Here you go, I action, I duplicate. It does means that when I save and I uh, confirm my order, right now I have a shipment coming in that will put my Tesla directly into shelf one, right? So basically by printing this, and using the barcode scanner, that, um, that product will go immediately into shelf one. 
I hope that that answered your question. If you need to tie it really per product, then you will need uh, to use put away roots. I don't have time to get into details that way, but I would recommend that maybe that, that you go into our online documentation. We have documentation about the roots into the inventory uh, app, uh, into the inventory um, section. Let's see, our next question, it looks like, I think we covered it already, right, Ron? Uh, how to address uh, serial numbers upon receipt. We took care of that one already. Uh, next, it looks like uh, someone's asking if there's a way to go through receipt and validation of incoming products without an Odoo instance being open in the warehouse such as the barcode scanner sending wirelessly to Odoo? Well, so in that case, um, yes and no. So uh, you have two choices. You have to have Odoo somewhere, right? Because even though it's the cloud, uh, people have to see what they're actually doing. Um, we are far away now with Odoo from the time where you had a huge barcode scanner that you can scan everything and then you would plug it in somewhere and sync it. Uh, we are in the cloud, so basically you have to have a link. What I would then recommend is go have a look at this inventory. It means that if you take one of the zebras, I have a couple of clients back in Europe who use them, um, those actually uh, do not require you to have uh, a physical laptop or tablet, but it's basically the same idea as to having a um, uh, an, an old, what I could call a uh, old school um, big barcode scanner, but you can then use those um, to have a uh, an Android operating system uh, and a screen and basically pull out Odoo into one device and scan it directly you, you, you using the barcode app and Odoo. So that might be the, uh, the middle ground that you're actually looking for. And uh, it works out of the box. So usually uh, you can I mean, maybe like like for uh, for instance, like like with my scanner, you might uh, want to configure some some uh, some some accounts on it, or configure you know like your QWERTY uh, or the barcode scanner itself. But uh, I had some good experience with those um, with those uh, uh, products. Wonderful. Uh, let's see. We have a, a few questions left, so we have about ten minutes. Uh, how can we bypass the picking receipt? scan action so that the incoming warehouse uh, can simply scan. Uh, sorry, let me make sure I have the, uh, uh, the, the question. Basically what you can do, uh, I think, is that if you don't if you, if you don't want the uh, picking to be printed, what you can do is basically go into the barcode app here and then click on operations. Okay. If you click on, on, on operations here, you will see all the operations that you need, need to do. And you can then click on want to receive here and basically select that one and then start scanning. So that way, no need to, to actually print out the, um, to print out uh, the uh, the operation, but you you can simply uh, yeah find it back uh, by, by 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 going that way. So uh, barcode operations received and then uh, get the one here. Only thing is, I like this feature for one reason or one reason only is that I don't like to print on paper. So I do agree that, that I like the fact of being able uh, not to print any paper, especially because also papers get lost sometimes. Um, the, the thing I don't like, however, is that. Um, uh, is that it's sometimes it's more difficult to find your uh, receipt right here than, than, to, uh, uh, than to actually scan it on a paper. Do note, however, that you have a search bar. So if you know what receipt you're actually looking for, or if you know what you're searching for, you can actually search it here as well. So le let's say that, that we have multiples here. You could have typed in 10, right, and search for picking list, even search for a partner, a product, an operation type, procurement group, everything you want. Right, so that could be a way of not printing out the uh, original picking if that is what you uh, were referring to um, in your question. Hope I answered it. <laughs> <laughs> right, and uh, let's see, someone else would like to know how to set maximum and minimum reordering levels and how uh, automated procurement works. Mm -hmm. um, all right, not really related to the, to, to the warehouse, uh, warehouse scanner, but uh, yeah, we have eight minutes, right? Sure. So maybe I would say it's not immediately related to, to the barcode, so maybe keep that one as last. We'll cover the other ones, okay. and I'll get back to that one um, if we have time with the eight minutes that are left here. Uh, let's see. How about exporting inventory adjustment before validating? Uh, the reason why I'm asking is if I'm working on a testing database, then import it to the production database. Mm, we might have to wait for that one as well. Not sure uh, I understand. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course, you can. If you want to export the, the inventory, you can. Uh, 
However, with the barcode scanner, you have uh, all of your inventory listed uh, with the real quantity and the theoretical quantity. So I'm not sure I immediately see the reason for that. Um, but yeah, you can export you can export the inventory adjustment before the, the, that you validate it. But at some point, you know, you just have to dive into it. So don't do, if you're in production, you, you, you should do your inventory adjustments in a production base uh, once you're live. So you can do that into an implementation phase with your consultants, why not? Um, but I would also say it would be easier, I think, than if you're in, in real production to do it directly into your production base. Don't forget, a, an inventory adjustment is simply changing the quantities of your project. You can always rechange them if at some point you have a big mistake, right? Just be careful if you're using real, uh, real time um, valuation of your inventory with accounting posting. That's already a level up, but yeah, that's uh, advanced configuration overdue. Very good. And then uh, let's see, what else? Uh, can, somebody asked, uh, do you assign or upload barcodes to all products in a database? So, um, well, yeah. Uh, so basically, on each of your products, I I assign my barcodes to all of my products, and you can do it actually pretty easy. Um, if you want to do it with an import, you go into the inventory here, you go into the products here, right? You you select you select everything, and you click on action export here. Then you simply export the barcode field, Excel or CSV, whatever you prefer, right? You open up your, uh, your your barcode app here, and then you, you can simply enter your barcodes uh, here in an Excel file. Let's say that I want to import that barcode, right? I save it up, and then I simply go back into my list view here, click on import, I load my last file here, here we go. Very simple, test the import, everything seems valid because everything always is, and we click on import, and then you have a barcode for every one of your products. But once again, I would recommend if you have products that, that come from a vendor, use their barcodes. It's way easier. Let's see here. Uh, Ron is asking, is it possible to put a report for today's incoming shipments on a dashboard? What do you mean with reports? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, so basically, so today's incoming shipments, the report that we have at the moment is this one. So basically, if you click on it, you will have in a list view every incoming shipment that you have to handle today. You, you can view that in two different views. You can view that in a Kanban or even in a, uh, in a uh, calendar view if you want. So I'm not 100% sure what you mean by, by report, but if you want more information than what is displayed uh, right here, two options use our awesome studio tool to customize the view, right? Or uh, use the export function here to export whatever you want in terms of fields into an Excel. Let's say that you're interested by the uh, created on, creation date, uh, owner, partner, printed, I don't know, product, right? You can save that export here as report. Click on OK. And then basically select everything that, that you want from today Action, export, select your report, and export it to your file. So that might be a way of, uh, of handling your case then. Not really sure what you mean with reports, but that is a report. <laughs> Let's see, somebody is asking, uh, have you utilized barcode scanning in manufacturing orders or work orders, such as scan to bring records, scan to pull components, scan to complete assembly, and scan serial number? Uh, you, you, can, you, you, uh, you can scan a serial number uh, into uh, uh, into the manufacturing, uh, into the uh, so into the um, into to the work centers uh, when you use a component or uh, produce a new one. Uh, it is pretty long to configure, so I can't get into that right now in four minutes. Uh, however, I would uh, recommend you to go into YouTube and uh, try to find our release notes um, from uh, our um, uh, keynote speech from the Auto Experience uh, for the V11, because our CEO, Fabian, uh, shows that, that feature uh, somewhere in the middle of the video. Um, it's a two-hour video. So maybe watch that tonight with some popcorns in the family. But uh, yeah, sure. uh, the, there is a function to add serial numbers while scanning them. However, I do not, th I wouldn't bet on it, but I do not think we have a function right now to be able to scan operations in manufacturing itself. Okay, all right. 
Well, Cedric, do you think we have enough time to get into uh, how to set maximum yes. and minimum reordering yes. levels? And worst case scenario, you, you know, we started two minutes late due to our sure, yeah. due exactly. to our uh, to our sound problem, so we can end two minutes late. It's not so, yeah, the, the worst case ever. Deal. Okay, so how does minimum uh, stock rule work? They are actually pretty easy. Um, a minimum stock rule is, uh, for those who, who don't know, is um, a rule that says, okay, uh, once my inventory hit a certain threshold, so hits a certain minimum level, I want to refurnish my inventory until a maximum level, right? Uh, to configure that, uh, we uh, need to go into the inventory and then into the products. I'm going to create a new product to show you how to do it. So uh, let's see uh, what kind of priority could we use as, as a minimum level. Uh, let's say something that's not perishable. Um, I don't know. Do you have an idea? Like, um, something that's not perishable? Yeah, something that's not perishable. I don't know. I'm blanking out. <laughs> <laughs> a water let's, bottle. A water bottle. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to re-switch to my Belgian keyboard. Here we go. So, um, let's do a water ball. Now, we have a zero quantity on hand and zero uh, forecasted, right? So, we want to make sure that uh, we have a stockable product here. And we also want to make sure that we have um, a, a vendor set on the product. So, we add the vendor. Uh, we will select uh, our new vendor. Let's say, uh, right? It's a company. Oh yeah, uh, nice feature by the way that, that we've added that I like ver very much. If you type in a company, you, you can now actually have the uh, the real companies coming up. That way, if you, I click on Evian, padam, I have the logo. I like the I, I, I like that feature. That way, I wanted to show it. So uh, we save it and we have our new uh, our new vendor, right? So we, you, you want to have a, a vendor. Then you want to configure the reordering rule itself, and the reordering rule can be found right here. So you, you click on reordering rule and you can create one. That way you have a name, a product, a location on which the reordering rule is going to scan. So be careful that if you have multiple locations into, into your warehouse, um, you, uh, it will scan only that location and its sub-locations, right? So imagine that you have two different locations, WH Talk and, w, and WH, uh, let's say, uh, Room 1, who are not sub location It will only scan that the location that you actually put, uh, put in here. Right. Let's say that we want a minimum quantity of five. Right. So we want to have five, um, five um, uh, quantities in minimum of our water of bottle in our stock, and we want a maximum of a hundred. A uh, hundred. Right. Uh, this is the way then to uh, select a minimum and maximum uh, quantity. You can also uh, multiply a quantity multiple. That is actually more if um, you want to the quantity to be rounded up to that multiple. All right. Um, if we save that, it means that, that actually right now uh, our water bottle has a reordering rule, right? But what happens now? I see I have a minimum of 5, I have a maximum of 100, and I have an on hand of 0, a uh, forecast of 0. So it actually means that I should have ordered something. Let's go have a look. I go in my purchase, request for quotations, nothing. Why? Well, it's actually because we have uh, uh, one thing in Odoo that is called a scheduler. And the scheduler, is, uh, the, the scheduler is, is something that will run every once in a while, um, one time a day, normally, if I remember co correctly. I think it will run during the night, so something like 3 a.m. Um, to, to check your current stock level. Why don't you want that to run constantly? It's because imagine for a moment that your stock level actually reaches uh, a certain threshold um, but that you actually are planning today to order uh, a, a massive, a massive amount. You don't want your inventory to directly go order when you hit the minimum threshold. You want it to, to give some room or to give some, uh, some time to other the user to be able to adapt the inventory. Imagine that the inventory is not up to date. Imagine that someone forgot to confirm the purchase order. Ev everything can happen. So it gives you some more flexibility. So what do we want to do then? If we want the procurement uh, to work right now, you can go into the inventory, go into master data, uh, actually reporting maybe, no, operations. Okay, operations, and then run the schedule. If you run the schedule here, it will actually check your current inventory, and if it was necessary, it will have created your uh, purchase orders. So let, let's go have a look right now. You have a new purchase order for an amount of 800 
uh, bottles. Why 100? Because we had a minimum of 5 and we want to reach maximum of 100, but we have a current stock of 0. So to get to that 100 maximum quantity, we want 0 to be ordered. Um, sorry, we want 100 to be ordered. So that's basically how you can uh, handle minimum uh, stock rules. Work very well with the barcode as well. If I confirm that, that, that order, I have a picking tab right here and I, I can start, start scanning as long as my water bottle has a barcode on it. I would however recommend if you use serial numbers on, on water bottles, maybe use lot numbers because you don't want to scan a hundred uh, lot numbers, uh, serial numbers in that case. Great. All right. Wonderful. Well then. Thank you, Cedric, for this presentation. <laughs> uh, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to click like if you found this video helpful, as well as to subscribe to our channel for access to lots of videos to help you get the most out of your business management software. Uh, don't forget, feel free to join us for one of our live tours. We will be in Milan next week. We'll be in Barcelona the following week and New York City the week after that. For more information about our events, please go to odoo.com slash events. And as always, if you have any further questions or if you would like to suggest a topic for another webinar, feel free to send them to webinars at odoo.com and we'll make sure to answer any questions that we didn't get to today. Uh, again, don't forget to subscribe uh, and to see more videos like this. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Give a hand to, to Cedric. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you got here late, you can obviously rewatch this webinar at any time by revisiting uh, the URL of this video. So thank you all again for joining us. I hope you uh, enjoy the long Memorial Day weekend if you're here in the U.S. or wherever you may be. Until next time, this is Odoo Live signing off.